for this review, I want to talk about uh, two or three articles here. First, I want to talk about the Arecibo telescope collapsing. Um, this was a radio telescope built in Puerto Rico by the U.S. National Science Foundation. Um, yes, National Science Foundation in the 1960s. It uh, recently had been starting to fall apart. And uh, I don't know why they didn't repair it. Maybe they couldn't repair it. I don't know why they didn't start building a new one to take its place once it collapsed. But it did finally collapse. And let's just take a look at this footage. No, nobody was around there because they were expecting this. And they had drones inspecting the cables. And they actually caught the moment they started to snap. Now, as we watch this footage, I just want to talk about how this is kind of a metaphor for the West in general. This was a great scientific achievement, and it, it really did benefit humanity. It was able to study natural phenomenon by studying radio signals that they released. It was also searching for possible, you know, intelligent life beyond Earth. It never found any, but it, it was a way for us to keep a lookout. And now it's gone, and that's kind of sad. And it's kind of a metaphor for the West in general, how a lot of the great things about the West are things we have to look back to see. And um, here's a Wikipedia entry for the Arecibo Observatory and the Arecibo Telescope. And uh, there's a lot of basic information here. Now, Wikipedia is not a reliable source, but it's a good place to go to start. And when you do something like this, this is kind of not, not really very political. So a lot of the details here are going to be accurate. But if you're writing, always go down to the references. Go down to the references and check them, double check them before you do any writing. Because Wikipedia is not a source. You cannot put that as a source for, for something. This was the Arecibo telescope in its heyday. That's kind of like what it looked like before it totally collapsed. And uh, again, it, it's just sad. And it just shows how the West in general is kind of just fade, crumbling, crumbling and fading away. Now, if the Arecibo telescope collapsing is a metaphor for the West's fading, from the global stage. What about the 500 meter aperture spherical telescope in China that just went online this year? I mean, they, they finished building it in 2016 and did a lot of testing now it's fully operational. And now, now that Arecibo is gone, this is the only radio telescope of its kind on earth today. And it's in China. And Let's take a pic look at a picture of it. This is what it looks like. And it, too, is a very impressive achievement. And so it just kind of shows you how things are moving forward in the East and things are falling apart in the West. I, I just thought it was a powerful metaphor. I also thought it was kind of interesting from a scientific and technological point of view. But uh, here, how about this? This is not a metaphor. This is... This is, this is West versus East here. Send gunboats to China to shake up reparations for unleashing COVID-19 weapon on the world, award-winning British Journal says. Now, this is an extreme example of a very widespread narrative that the Western media and even Western politicians have been pushing now this entire year about how China is somehow behind the COVID-19 virus spreading. They either did it deliberately or they did it because they were incompetent. It was spreading. They couldn't contain it. They didn't warn anybody. Uh, that's the narrative. But if that is supposed to be a convincing narrative, how come when it finally did reach the US or Europe, how come it wasn't immediately detected, contained, everybody warned, and the pandemic stopped in its tracks. If it's that easy to do, how come the US and Europe didn't do it? Because it probably isn't that easy. And this narrative is purely political. This is a way for the West to poison its population against China because there is this great contest, this power contest going on between the West and the East and Ch between the US and China specifically. This is a this is Cold War rhetoric all over again. And I, you know, I don't think that it's going to I don't think that it's going to work, but that's what that's what this all is here. And one more article before I wrap this up. This is about um, the US and Huawei, this Chinese telecom company. 
and they arrested one of their executive uh, the executive financial officer, as a matter of fact, in Canada. Canada's playing along with this, which should surprise nobody. And again, this is about the West unable to compete with China. Uh, Western companies cannot compete with Huawei um, head to head fairly in, in the markets. Huawei was winning. So that's why we see the U.S. making up stories about how Huawei is compromising national security, how they need to be pushed out of Western markets. They shouldn't be allowed to, to do any bidding or be involved with 5G. And they're not just pressuring Western countries to do this. They're in Asia here right now, pressuring governments to throw Huawei out. It's, uh, I think in Vietnam, maybe it's working, but elsewhere, it's definitely not working. And this this whole strategy is not going to work because Huawei is already outcompeting the West. And the West is doing this to Huawei and to China, and it's not really that effective. And what I think some people don't understand is that this is where China is right now. In, in the near future, more people are going to have gotten a higher education, started their own companies or are working for these companies that the talent pool is just growing every year and the the ability for Huawei to compete internationally grows every year and companies like Huawei their capabilities grow every year so this strategy for the US this is this is completely this is horrible leadership the West should be investing in education. They should be investing in industry. They should not be wasting money and resources with, with this soft power nonsense that doesn't work. It's not working. And this economic warfare, it's not working. You're slowing Huawei down. But you're buying yourself time, but you're buying yourself time to do what? Because you're not doing any of the things you need to do to actually catch up with Huawei. You're just dragging everyone down with you. So that's, you know, this is something that's going to continue going on. Uh, into the foreseeable future. And so I'm going to probably be covering it. When when there's good examples of this, I'm going to probably be putting them in the reviews. And I hope that you have enjoyed this review. If you're a patron through pa pa my Patreon account, thank you very much. And the more patrons I get, the more projects I'm going to be able to do. So these reviews are kind of like the first project, the extra project that I've been doing. I hope to do uh, much bigger projects in the future. So thank you for that. And if you're watching this when I've posted it publicly, please like and share the video. Um, look in the video description for references to the articles that I mentioned and also information about how you could support my work if you want to, especially uh, the Patreon account, because not only can you contribute monthly, but you're actually also going to be getting uh, benefits and content back in return. It'll also be an opportunity to kind of collaborate with me also on uh, give me some feedback, give me some input. And, uh, you know, maybe we can build a little bit of a community around this. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.